Kyle Klingman with Track Wrestling. We go all the way out to Amon Jordan with Dan Russell, four-time Division II NCAA champion is a four-timer, and then he went to Division I and was an All-American there. Now wrestling for peace in Jordan. Dan, welcome. Hey, it is great to be here and excited with uh, all the things that are taking place in the midst of the chaos. Uh, there's some great things happening with wrestling and some great stories taking place. Uh, what a great sport to be a part of. And I'm going to let you introduce the guy next to you. Pretty incredible story himself. <laughs> I'm sitting next to uh, Saleh Azodakat, and Saleh was the very first Middle Eastern champion for, for Jordan. Not only that, he serves on our uh, National uh, Jordanian Wrestling uh, Committee, and he serves on uh, the South Asia Committee for Wrestling. And uh, uh, not only is he very involved in wrestling at, at the highest levels, but he's a good man and Thank you, Mr. Dan. <laughs> and uh he's he's my partner here so so we've been uh you know working this this program called wrestling for peace and i came here uh, uh to to establish a base within this region and uh, uh Saleh's jumped in and and as a goodwill ambassador right alongside me and and uh we're we're having a lot of fun and we're yes. getting a lot of work done yes. it's been good well Saleh, how did you find wrestling right away now or back in the days? Back in the day. How'd you find it? Oh, back in the days, 1980-something, 85. I mean, back in the days, I used to do a lot of tug of war back when the army. I was in the army, do tug of war. I used to do, like, weightlifting. And actually, I don't see no compete in this camp. You know, just go do bodybuilding stuff. I, just, I need something more in there. So I need some challenge. So we, back in the days, the wrestling used to be, like, just with our federation started 1982. So when I started wrestling like 1986, we just like we're brand new babies. You know, we just little by little, I start loving wrestling, like the, the move, stuff like that. And it, you know, how you do wrestling, is, you know, it's just tough sport and I love it. I like to be in tough stuff like this. I, I think that's one of the marks of wrestlers is wrestlers are not afraid to do hard things. And I think in the world in which we live, what, what a great, uh, character quality that wrestling develops and not only does he love to do hard things <laughs> but he's passionate about wrestling and i don't know if you when you're around people that just love wrestling and they're passionate about it it's it's contagious and uh, uh from uww's perspective they're very excited with jordan wrestling right now because the committee that's been gathered is uh, a group of uh, tremendous leaders and Saul is one of those and uh, and and they're passionate for the sport so I we're excited about some great things happening right here in Jordan and and the impact that's going to have on the entire region you know of all the countries around us and wrestling's um, a unifier wrestling is something uh, it, it brings respect and it brings humility it brings honor it's it's this sport that um, is, is a world language all of its own. And, uh, and Jordan's significant in the wrestling story. So uh, it, it's a unique place to be here to establish a base for wrestling for peace. Well, you can't say something like Jordan is a significant part of the wrestling story without telling us what that piece is. So I'm going to let you elaborate. I am what you mean. so excited you asked. <laughs> uh, you know, I, when, when you think of uh, uh, challenges in our world and you think of conflict and, and uh, uh, you know, one of the areas of, of conflict in this area uh, can come around uh, religion, where you've got, you've got uh, you know, uh, Judaism, you've got uh, Islam, and you've got Christianity. But wrestling is a unique sport that's tied right here to Jordan. Jacob wrestled with God in Jordan uh, on the ford of the Jabbok River. And uh, that story is, is, a, is a huge story within the, the uh, uh, Jewish and, and Christian culture. But not only that, wrestling is important in the Islam culture in that Muhammad uh, uh, wrestled Rakana, who was an undefeated wrestler, never been beaten. And Muhammad took him down three times. And in the, in the context of that story, Rakana learns respect 
He learns humility. He learns honor. All the things that we say are qualities that wrestling brings. And so here you have a sport that's uniquely tied uh, as the king. The king of Jordan is a direct descendant of Muhammad. And the king wrestled. In fact, his dream was to wrestle for Jordan in the Olympic Games, and he got injured. His brothers wrestled. Prince Ali, Prince Fazl were wrestlers. And uh, Prince Fazl sits on the executive board for the International Olympic Committee. Prince Ali sits on the board with Sally Roberts with Wrestle Like a Girl. So uh, uh, you've got the leadership of this country who uh, are, by the way, uh, tremendous leaders. They're, they're not only were great wrestlers and great warriors, they're also uh, leaders, uh, they're men of peace. And they have struggled uh, in this area for peace in significant ways uh, that uh, I think uh, is some character traits that, that the world uh, needs to pay attention to. They, they've done an amazing job in the way they've led here. So it's a unique place to be for wrestling. It's just a unique place to be. If you want to see some of the history of wrestling that dates back to some of the most epic matches in the history of our sport, took place right here in Jordan. And if you could both speak to that, just the deep code that wrestling has and how you feel that with Wrestling for Peace and how that deep code is able to transcend a lot of barriers. Uh, what's that mean? So, so, for instance, Saleh and I, uh, I, I didn't know Saleh until I moved here. Yeah. Saleh and I, uh, the moment we met, the connector for us was wrestling. Yes. And through that sport, it's allowed us to have incredible, incredible conversations and dialogues uh, that, that go deeper than a sport. And I think that's one of the beauties of wrestling. It allows you, because you respect each other, right. There's, it's, a, it's an honor sport. And, uh, um, and it's wrestling that, that brought us together. And through that, we're able to have some, some great conversations. You know, the big idea with Wrestling for Peace is this, is to wrestle is to struggle and overcome. You know, wrestlers aren't afraid to do hard things because wrestling is hard. It's a struggle. But the goal isn't to stay in the struggle. It's to, to, to go through that struggle and come out on the other side, uh, learning to overcome these, these hard things. So... Wrestling for Peace is this idea is how do we as the wrestling family come alongside those in the wrestling match of life and encourage them to overcome? Because the truth is, if you're on this side of eternity, you're a wrestler because life is a struggle. Life's hard. And I think uh, wrestlers can speak to hard things and, and, and learning to embrace pain, learning to embrace struggle, learning to embrace the hard things in life. But to do that with, with a vision or a purpose that, that uh, helps you get to the other side uh, of that struggle. Um, but it's a willingness to embrace the process. And so, um, you know, we're looking at, at the needs that are in our world, which, you know, are glaring right now. How, how do we as the wrestling family come alongside those that are struggling and encourage them in, in their own wrestling match in life? So that, that was the big idea, and then along this way is, is as we think about wrestling in our sport, uh, people that are outside our sport don't understand um, the beauty of, of these things that we've just talked about. But if you've wrestled, you get it. I mean, we're, we all know what, what that means. So we've tried forever to promote wrestling by trying to get people interested in in the sport through, through, our, through our competitions. People don't understand how it's scored. They, they, they get confused. Uh, the rules are changing. What we thought is, what if instead of trying to get the community to come care about us, what if we showed our community we care about them? In the process of joining them in, in their areas of struggle, uh, they would begin to care more about our sport. So you know what, I want my, my son or I want my daughter to wrestle because of these things that it teaches. I've seen these character qualities and, and, and it's unique. And I've seen the bond that happens. It's unique. I want my children to experience that. And, and so as a way to grow our sport and to grow a fan base, we thought, what if we, we took the strategy of showing that we as wrestlers aren't afraid to do hard things and we're willing to go in and, 
take on some of the toughest challenges in the world. What does your day-to-day -day look like over there? Well, during lockdown, it's looked pretty locked down. Uh, uh, but we, uh, we've, we've, though we've been locked down, we, we haven't been, um, we've been busy. We've been busy. We, we, we just uh, finished a, a grant that we've uh, submitted to, to the uh, U.S. Embassy. Uh, the leadership of the Jordan Wrestling Federation, the leadership from the uh, Olympic Federation here in Jordan, have all expressed the number one goal for us is to get a women's wrestling team started in Jordan. And uh, that's pretty significant. And, uh, and so through that, we, we've submitted a grant, uh, which writing a grant and going through that process was, a, was, um, was embracing some struggle. It's, it's not an easy process to walk through. So, uh, but we put that together. We're hoping to, to launch a, a women's team this year. Uh, alongside the men's freestyle and Greco team and uh, and begin to grow and to build the sport. So we've been strategizing. We've been looking at and talking about our training. Uh, what do we do training wise right now as, as people have been confined? Because the tradition and culture is different from other countries. Because you know here like 90% from Jordan country is Muslim. And you know, they're not allowed to wear something over the knees. That's against our religion. So we try to pass this, I mean, we talked yeah. with, the, with the United World Wrestling to allow these guys, maybe they wear the whole gear, they cover their knees and down to be able to rest, like, like happening in Iran now and happening in, uh, in Lebanon. So we need to get a coach because man, a trained woman is just for like forbidden or dislike, like their family doesn't like, you know, touching, throwing some man, touch a woman. This is from our culture and our uh, religion is, is just dislike or just forbidden. So we try to get a woman to help this national team of Jordan. And we have a lot of jiu-jitsu women, actually, they wanted to be a wrestler because the jiu-jitsu is, 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 is not Olympic game. So they want to be with the Olympic game as a wrestling to be high level and just we need to train to talk to Mr. Dan. If we get a woman, she trained the national team here. And we could make it a grow and grow. And if we have a coach as a woman, it's going to be huge. Long we have a man, everybody's going to be hesitant. Yeah. Well, Dan, you know that there's a couple big names in our sport named Jordan, Jordan Oliver, Jordan Burroughs. Once you get them over there for an all Jordan camp. That is a That'd brilliant awesome. idea. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, it's, I, from a strategic standpoint, because I know my brother and I know his passion for this team to be as, as fine-tuned and ready uh, for their world competition. Uh, I've, I've talked with Jordan Burroughs and I've said, once uh, you start looking to a transition, I, I want to help prepare the base for you to be able to to take this to the next level. Um, and, uh, uh, and I know that uh, um, right now, their focus has to be on, uh, on, on their performance at the Worlds, at the Olympics, and, and, uh, and dealing with that. So I don't want to be a distraction, because my brother would not be happy with it. <laughs> but, uh, um, but at the same time, yeah, I, I, I see an opportunity for us as we build this thing for, for wrestlers when they transition, because that's one of the most difficult things. When you've competed at, at the highest levels, and then all of a sudden you're no longer competing, uh, uh, what's next? Uh, I, I hope to, to help be a bridge for athletes to have a place where they can go, oh, this is something I can do next. And not only is it something that I'm passionate about and love, it's something that's gonna be doing a lot of good in our world. It's gonna make a, it's gonna make a difference. And so, you know, it's, as, as we look at this, the program Wrestling for Peace, USA Wrestling for Peace is a small uh, uh, beginning process. But as we grow this and we do it right, uh, build a good foundation, I see this as being a significant uh, program uh, within our wrestling family. Talk about wrestling family and it just comes through how much you love wrestling. 
And I imagine it has to hurt that Portland State dropped wrestling and that you don't have a program that you can identify with anymore. You had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it, it really is an interesting thing because when you when you sign on at a college and you make a commitment there, and for me, uh, uh, I felt when I said yes to Portland State because I had I had options to go anywhere, but when I said yes to Portland State, it, for me it was if I said yes here, I need to honor that commitment, and uh, um, and so you know. Th- there could have been bigger programs. There could have been other places that I could have gone, but I chose to stay and, and I got to wrestle under a phenomenal coach, Marlon Gron, uh, another guy that just passionate about wrestling. The guy would not leave a tournament until the last match had wrestled. I don't care where we were. He just loved wrestling. And, and I loved being around him for that reason. Uh, Portland State, though, was a historic program. Uh, Rick Sanders, first world champion. Uh, multiple Olympic medalist, uh, uh, a creative uh, artist with the sport. And I, the history of that sport was, was incredible. So, you know, you go to the NCAA tournament and, and there is a sense you almost feel like an orphan and, uh, um, because your team's not there. Uh, you, you don't get a root on, uh, you know, the colors that, that, that you, you uh, went through blood, sweat, and tears. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, uh, those are difficult things. And I think, uh, as we watch, uh, the back end of this, uh, and watching programs talking about potentially dropping it, it, it grieves me because it's short term perspective. When I think of the long term benefits that our sport has, I don't think there's a time in our world where our, our world has needed wrestling more and the, the character qualities and, and the things that wrestling teaches we need as a world we need wrestling and uh and it's the one program that people should be holding on to and fighting for and and cheering on because of what it does and the and the kind of uh uh the kind of people that it attracts um um is a lot of them have come through some impossible situations in their childhood and and grown up in some some difficult places, but wrestling has been a place where they found a, a way through, um, and uh, they found direction, and they found focus and goals, and and uh, all all of these things. I so yeah, it it grieves me uh, that Portland State dropped, and and uh, but every program that drops, I, I feel the same uh, kind of punch in the gut uh, that I felt when when my own program dropped. What's it look like for you guys going forward if the quarantine gets lift? What kind of things do you have coming up on the horizon? Well, I'll tell you, the first thing we're doing, uh, in fact, we're doing it tonight, is, uh, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, the suplex and the training system yes. that they've got and those things. Because if we can't have hand-to-hand contact right those now with guys, people, yes. we, we need to be looking at other things. And you talk about a creative wrestling genius, uh, Ivan Ivanov uh, ha- has uh, – um, he loves our sport as another one of those guys. And I, I, uh, I loved cause we got, we trained together at the Olympic training center back, back way back in the past. And, and, uh, um, I've always, always, uh, loved, loved, loved the guy and loved what he's doing. Other things that we've done, um, you know, during this quarantine time, uh, Nike has jumped in and said, Hey, we want to help. We, we want to help your, your national team. Uh, how, how can we help? Um, we're watching the wrestling family in the midst of this say, uh, um, we, 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 we want to, we want to help make a difference alongside you. And that's been really encouraging in the midst of this. So next steps is we've got to get our team, uh, start kind of coming back, uh, lifting, running, um, good in shape. Yeah. Uh, Because tournaments are going to be here before we know it. We don't know when yet, but they're coming. Yes. And well, we want to be ready. This man, uh, do you still got a couple throws in your arsenal, Dan? You know, I love watching these other guys throw a lot more <laughs> because in my mind, it's there. It's right. there. I see it. I, I, 
And, and about four seconds later, when I react, it's gone. It's too late. <laughs> uh, it is funny how wrestling and anybody that's wrestled, you still yeah. dream about it. Like, you, you, you still relive those moments and those matches. And the blood. Uh, yeah. Um, and in my mind, I, I still have it. But it takes me about uh, uh, 20 seconds, and I, I – uh, <laughs> <laughs>